Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Pole Father. It only takes one. We are finally back. I uh, just celebrated my 31st birthday, um, making our way to the fourth level, one step at a time. Slow and steady wins the race. So in this video specifically, um, I'm really making it not really the most like investor type channel where I'm gonna say, hey, you should buy this or sell this, returns this, returns that, you're gonna make this, you're gonna lose that. Um, no, that's totally up to you and your decisions. But in this video, I wanna go over something a little bit differently. Um, now granted, this is a mainly Pokemon stream channel and that's how I wanna keep it. But there are some, I don't wanna say life lessons, but there's some street smarts I really wanna to shed to people about investing in general. Um, these are kind of things that I've lived by, I've made on my own to, to, to have successful investments, I should say. So I don't wanna, I'm not gonna talk about it too long. Um, I'm not gonna talk to you in, I, I call it quote unquote, I'm not gonna talk to you in a, in a different language where you're gonna look at me sideways and say, what does this mean, what does that mean? No, I'm gonna talk to you on a street level basis, very simple wording to make you understand what is the most important thing when it comes to investing in nearly anything. Yeah, I could throw out fancy terminology and language and so forth, returns this, returns that. At the end of the day is, this is the, the mindset you need to have. So, number one, um, and before I jump into this, I just want to reinstate again. I have absolutely, I mean, I, I make some money along the way in this hobby, but I am definitely not full time in this. This is my hobby. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, so take this as you as you would, guys. But these are things that I do outside the hobby that you for work. So, number one, and it's probably the most important thing is is the juice worth the squeeze? So the first thing someone's going to read that and they're going to say, well. Okay, so the interpret is that if I could buy this for $100 and sell for $200, the juice is worth the squeeze. I'll buy it, sell it. Yes, in that mindset, it, it is what it means. But taking it one step further, being, a, being one step ahead of everyone else is what I'm talking about here. Is the juice worth the squeeze? How do you get ahead? How, are you, how do you get to the point where you're one step ahead of everyone else? The key thing is this. How committed and how passionate are you to the hobby? Now I'm gonna refer this to Pokemon cards, right? So we're gonna be relating this to Pokemon cards. I'm not gonna be relating this to my job or what I do outside this stuff, but in relation to Pokemon cards, whether, you, and it's okay, you can, be, you can be just getting back into it and or you've been long away for 10 years and you're just getting back into it like all of us did at one point. But the question is how passionate are you about this? For example, if you're very passionate about collecting Pokemon cards, how to follow number one, how much research are you doing on your own? How much are you following up on the market? Are you seeing what's hot right now? Are you looking at things selling? Are you looking at things dropping in price? Are you looking at what's buying right now? Are you looking at, uh, it's, it's all fluctuation of the market. How much of this are you looking into? This new promo card's coming out. How many tens of this are coming out? Are there any tens coming out? Where's the population of this card? What's the population of that card in this set? What are you falling into it? If you're passionate about it, what I just said doesn't sound like a lot. You'll naturally do it on your own. You'll take time and effort on your own to do this research on your own. Yeah, after a long day of work, you know, you don't have to be a full-time person investing. You don't have to have this, I believe in complete diversification. You don't have to be solely committed to Pokemon for investments, but to follow it, to know where things are at, makes it a lot easier. You'll be a lot more successful. For example, um, this is actually a great example. Let's talk about vintage cards, right? I know people out there that just get into it um, and they're just like, oh, I want to become a millionaire overnight. And we'll talk about that next. You know, oh, base set cards, vintage cards. They don't even know the difference between first edition, base set, base set shadowless, and the fourth print. Right there, four different things. How much research are you doing on your own? Now taking one step further, What's the difference between thick and thin stamp first edition? Is there a difference? Is there more demand for it? Is there a price difference? Is there a fluctuation? One step past that even further, cert eras. Did this cert era grade harder? Did this old side grade it harder? Where's this company at grading this card? Where's that company grading at this card? Are you going on third party auctions and seeing where those cards are selling at? There's a lot of different aspects into is the juice worth the squeeze? But the most important thing is being one step ahead of everyone else. And that's because you're passionate about it and you're naturally doing more research about the hobby. That itself will lead you down the road of success. Number two, 
instant gratification of becoming a millionaire. And maybe I'm just very fortunate. Um, definitely with social media, on uh, YouTube and all those things. Uh, this is something that I never got really sucked into. And I think I'm just very lucky that I never really bit, bit into it. A lot of people, and whether, again, whether collecting Pokemon cards, starting a YouTube channel, everyone says, you know, wow, like this person just posted a video saying, I made, I'm making X amount of money buying this Pokemon, keeping it sealed and selling it. I'm buying and selling. It's giving better returns, S&P 500, whatever it may be. The most important thing is these people aren't becoming rich and millionaires overnight. It is physically impossible to become a millionaire overnight. There's only two ways to do it. And the way I see it personally, if you become a millionaire overnight, you're probably involved in some type of scam. And that includes cryptocurrency. And if you want to count winning the lottery, I mean, I guess that's just pure luck, right? But again, becoming a millionaire overnight doesn't exist. To become a millionaire, to make millions, to make tens of millions of dollars, it's a grind, it's a process, it's sweat, tears, and blood into quote unquote, the hobby. It's taking the time to do the research. It's taking the time to maybe stay up an hour extra late and do more research on a certain card or a certain set or what's coming out. That is the grind. It's taking the time of sacrificing today to better yourself for tomorrow. That is a key thing for becoming, I shouldn't even want to say money related, but just becoming successful in general. You know, you can start from nearly next to nothing and also now you have something and then you learn along the way to become more successful. There's a lot of different ways to describe that, but take the mindset of becoming a millionaire overnight. It's a grind. It's a process. Trust the process, trust the grind and have fun along the way. If you do those things, you'll be very successful. One more thing in regards to that. A perfect example. You look at any other YouTubers, right? Look at them all. There's so many Pokemon YouTubers. This guy has, you know, and so many people watching and including myself, you know, I'm a small YouTuber, 200 followers. Woohoo! For me, that's like, hey, like, that's awesome. Like, I'm loving it. But like, you know something, those people that have, let's talk about like 7,000 followers or talk about the people that have 16,000 followers and higher, 20, 50, those people, it looks on paper, I mean, on, on your phone, it looks like, wow, wow, look at that. But I can tell you what, those people with that many number of followers, they've been grinding and grinding for years, for years. And yeah, you know what? There are some YouTubers that will have a video and gives them a little hiccup pop, but it doesn't quote unquote make them, yeah, in that terminology, what is going viral? Oh, like it went viral. Oh, great. So they, yeah, they gained a couple thousand followers, so be it. But at the end of the day, that's not how, oh, wow, it's just becoming a millionaire. It's a process. It's a step. So look at how many videos a lot of these YouTubers have posted. I mean, mine, I have, I think, like maybe 200, but take a look at people that have, you know, 10,000 plus followers or five, even 5,000 plus followers. Look at all that. Look how many videos they have posted. They're up in the, the hundreds and some are even up in the thousands. Actually, I think they are the thousands. So you gotta understand, it's a grind, it's a process, and most importantly, have fun doing it. Don't expect things, work hard for them, and you'll be down the right road to success. Number three, this is a good one. Control the outcome. Now, what does that mean? Now, someone's gonna say, Mr. Polefather, how can I control that I buy this and the, the market just tanks? That's not what I'm relating to. Control the outcome as in, nobody's forcing you to put money down on the table to buy into something. Now, take this consideration, right? There's an old saying, you're in the jungle and you're running as fast as you can and there's a Bengal tiger. I think it may even, I think it's like a lion, but I like to use tiger because I think there's a little more scarier and lethal. There's a tiger chasing after you and you're about 20 yards in front of the tiger and you're running through the jungle and you come to a cliff. Like you you, the, the no-brainer is to jump, right? You got a Bengal tiger chasing after you in a jump that called a 50 foot jump into the water, whatever it may be. You notice something how the person will always stop to think before they jump. Why would they think? You have a tiger coming after you, it's gonna come and rip you up and eat you alive, but you stop and you think before you jump. Controlling the outcome. You're not gonna turn to face the tiger, you're more than likely gonna jump, but it's the art of your stopping to jump. But you think to yourself before you jump, you're thinking before you jump. So there's a lot of like, let's just talk about the Logan Paul, you know, scenario, okay? 
He opens up this, opens that. Guy's been doing many YouTube videos and I think Vine, for those of you who remember Vine. Um, he's been doing it ever since. Um, but you know what? He did, and I'm not saying what he did was right, you know, by doing things and crowd raising money and so forth, involved in scams and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, he's not making you put money down. Controlling the outcome is your, your control of where you want to put your money when it comes to investing. Do you want to put your money more in a vintage? Do you want to put your money more in a modern? Do you want to put more money towards Japanese? Is there more of a niche for you? Do you take more interest in certain areas? Do you find that this certain item down the road could be more successful and why? Thinking about, again, one step down the road further, okay? Let's take this card for example. This is a good one. This is actually a great example. Uh, where'd it go? Actually, here, these are two perfect ones. And again, I'm not, I'm not a Mr. Financial guy about these. I love collecting for the fun of it. And I, I love collecting for the fun of it. Pokemon is my hobby and so forth. But let's take these two cards, for example. Two Champions Path, uh, Charger V, Rainbow VMAX, PSA Times, right? Take this into consideration, right? Listen up. So each card probably has, like, what, like 10,000 plus copies and created 10, right? Okay. So there you go. You're... You're investing time into it. You're reading. You're doing the information on it. Champion's Path. Um, in my opinion, those cards weren't that easy to pull. I think they were fairly challenging to pull. I know people that were opening up ETBs and boxes and so forth and still weren't getting them. I mean, I think I only pulled three total, and that includes one one rainbow. Or I'm sorry. Uh, one rainbow, two Vs. Okay, whatever, maybe. But taking it one step further, right? So at one point, these cards were sold for two grand. Price drop, price drop. And so forth. Now I think they sit at like $250 or $300 at most, maybe. Um, so they're at an all-time low the way I see it. So thought process of this, right? So you know the performance of the card, you know how hard it was to pull it, you know what set it came from, how did the set perform as a whole? Now taking time down the road, where's the set? I think the set came out in what 2020. Okay, so now we're three years, right? We're about three years past when the set came out. So now there's 10,000 copies plus, yet it's still a card that's very popular to the area. Yeah, the price isn't, isn't there for demand, but it's still a very popular card. Everyone knows the card and so forth. So now ask yourself this, where do you see that card performing 10 years down the road? The, with my opinion on, this is just my opinion on this example. Now there's many different cards, many different examples. And again, this isn't my channel where I'm giving financial advice or what I'm gonna do and so forth, but I'm just using these as an example. I think for those two cards, you're going to run into people that are going to want to unload those one day because they're going to be hoping that it's going to help, quote unquote, send their kid to college. Notice how parents were more interested in getting into them and people so were saying, hey, maybe if I have this one day, it'll sell for this, so forth. And yeah, you know what? I actually think there is meat on the bone for it, but long term play, not for me. Why is that? Because the population is so high. Now, you know, you take something like the Boomerang, you can go on down, down a whole rabbit hole with that card, but. The result is how can you be one step ahead of everyone else controlling the outcome as in should you place your money here yes or no all three of these things looping together as you can tell follow these three things and you will be successful in investing in anything don't be afraid to make mistakes you will be make mistakes on along the way you can't be afraid of mistakes that helps you grow make mistakes to grow don't be so upset with yourself because you overpaid for a card. We have all have done it. And if they said they've never overpaid for a card, they're lying to your face. For sure. Last but not least, the fourth more most important investing criteria that I live by. See how nothing's there? Because that fourth rule, you determine what your fourth rule is. Everyone else has a thing they live by, and that's okay. For me, it only takes one. No, I'm just joking. Not for investing, but yeah, for investing too, but that's just my mom for the channel. But that fourth rule is that rule that you live by that ties in all four of those things together to make everything flow and function well of investing. So I hope this video was good for everyone. Um, it was a little bit different than what I normally talk about. Um, more so doing this for fun, as everyone knows that watches this channel. Um, but those are the most typical, important things when it comes to investing, whether it be, again, Pokemon cards, real estate, collectibles, um, even stocks, you know, like, are you investing, are you looking at how this company's performing or 
you know, what's coming in, you know, the future of things, technology, where's this at, where's that, that, that. If you have a passion for any of those, uh, any of those things and you want to invest in it, you will run to success. You'll make mistakes along the way, but you will run to success eventually. And that success, or I'm sorry, you will fail 10 out of 10 times before you succeed once. So don't be afraid of failure, guys. So it is Sunday, time for some football. I don't even know if the Bucks are playing, but um, take this video as it is, guys. Uh, got more more exciting videos coming forward. I'm very excited to show you guys soon what I've been working on. I am definitely buying cards right now. Um, but I'm staying very quiet what it is because the cabal is watching. And what I've learned is the cabal doesn't sleep. They are watching what I'm buying, and now they're adding some little competition in there. But <laughs> so, guys, I'm the pole father, and remember. It only takes one, and we are back.